Thank you very much, and uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here again at the Shaftesbury Society. I spoke to this luncheon about, I think it's been about four years ago, and uh, at that time I spoke about the free market and government at a crossroads. And I made the claim that I felt and I believe we're at a crossroads for, for two reasons. Um, the first I said at, at that lecture was there's a broad misunderstanding of the fundamentals of the market process which is more prevalent than ever. And I also uh, argued that a political process that leads to huge overspending and, and ballooning deficits particularly through the regulatory process is something that is profoundly uh, um, detrimental. And the first reason that, that I just mentioned is what I've tried to address directly through my um, you know, job as a professor teaching young students at the college level, but then also in this partnership with the Jesse Helm Center, this curriculum that I'll mention uh, a little bit today. But I believe that the fundamental idea of the free market, what it means, how it works, why an economy should be organized this way, is misunderstood today more than ever. Um, an economic system labeled a free market or free enterprise has become meaningless in terms of terminology in some respect. Many believe today that the free market is an economy that has some principles of markets, for example, free prices or, or generally free prices but one that is managed by the state. Again, this increasing belief in the use of the term free market for the US economy is having a profound effect on how people view the role of government and the role of government management of the economy. So, so the, you know, the question obviously that I ask um, regularly is what makes an economy free? And one way to measure this is probably uh, familiar to many of you but we live in a free market system that um, has become synonymous with some general primary measures of what it means to have economic freedom. Specifically, looking at the overall size of government, the regulatory burden, the level of free trade, the protection of property rights, and the role of monetary policy. But depending on how you measure those three variables, or excuse me, those five variables, the US scored in the top three countries globally in the year 2000, based on Heritage and Cato are the large groups that do uh, a freedom index. And today it ranks 13th or 14th. And so one question is why the decline? Well, this change over the past decade can be traced back, I believe, to the huge change in the regulatory burden on the economy. Changes made under the guise of what is necessary to get the economy back on track based on the most recent financial crisis quoted or uh, argued to begin around December 2007. But I believe these changes are the result of a broad support for a managed market economy. Or worse, due to the belief that the free market economy is really one that must involve extensive government oversight. And so a few, a few points of data to show the increasing management of the economy by the state. Um, number one, the startup rate of new businesses is down about 20% since 2009. And in part, the regulatory burden to startup is, plays a role. The second is the huge subsidies to large corporations that have only grown annually, especially in the agricultural and energy sectors. Uh, the idea of too big to fail bailouts. Uh, fourth, the role of lobbying and its contributions to the regulatory burden. And then also, I think, uh, which leads me into what I want to talk about more today, a general mis misunderstanding of the important role entrepreneurs play in the economy. And I believe this is most critical because how the rules of the economy exist determine, in large measure, whether entrepreneurs are going to be productive or not. So let me, let me give you a couple uh, brief examples here. In terms of the fourth point I made, the role of lobbying, um, an interesting uh, kind of method I used in my class is I taught a class throughout the semester on you know a pretty straightforward economics course where we talked about regulation and many other components of the macro economy and I asked my students on the final exam say you have two firms that are competing against each other and these two firms are of course trying to gain market share and broaden their market base and become more profitable 
I ask the students based on what they know, what they've learned, and what they feel would be the most efficient and effective way for one firm to compete and take market share from the other firm. And to much horror of mine and probably many in this room, a very large percentage of the course answered that question by saying that one firm should use the political process to gain advantage over the second firm. And unfortunately, that wasn't the answer I was hoping to read, but one that they obviously saw amidst their uh, you know, observation of the state, but one they both, one they viewed as a legitimate means of competing against another firm. My last point um, on the general misunderstanding of the important role of entrepreneurship in the economy, this um, became very clear to me about 15 years ago when I read a seminal article by a, a relatively famous economist named William Balmel, who wrote an article back 25 years ago called Entrepreneurship, Productive, Unproductive, and Destructive. And in this article, Baumel points out that there will be a certain level of entrepreneurs in any society. So it's not a mystery where entrepreneurs come from or the fact that they exist. But the key is that it's not the shortage or lack thereof of entrepreneurs that exist, but it's the incentives in society that, that determine where these entrepreneurs are going to spend their productive time. So will they focus their entrepreneurial creative efforts through market means generating productive, re using resources productively to create value? Or will they use the political process or what, what um, many of us have learned in terms of crony capitalism in the relationship between markets and government to, you, to uh, be, quote, creative to extract resources from others? And so that's the question that I pose to my students today and one that I'm trying to use this curriculum to educate others about is how can we, can we understand the role of entrepreneurship in the free enterprise context and why it is so important for our uh, economy to continue to flourish. So my goal as an economist and educator is to help students at the college level but in this curriculum that I want to talk about briefly today at the middle and high school level to learn about the importance of free enterprise and the role entrepreneurs play in society. But in addition, my hope is that this program will encourage students to think more critically about the increasing encroachment of government policy into economic activity and on how destructive this can be to creativity and human flourishing. So in conjunction with the Jesse Helm Center, I'm a free enterprise fellow, as, as was mentioned, at the Jesse Helm Center. We've uh, put together this curriculum that can be used in the context of middle and high school students in a, very, in a variety of ways, tailored to many, many different contexts. And uh, as you see on the website here that I have, it's uh, labeled Free Enterprise Now. And I want to play for you this brief introductory video and then um, speak to you a little bit more about the curriculum. Welcome to the course Free Enterprise Now, presented by the Jesse Helm Center. I'm Dr. Peter Frank, Associate Professor of Economics at Wingate University, and you're about to embark upon a journey of discovery that will give you a clear picture of the free enterprise system and the role entrepreneurs play in the market economy. In this course, we examine and explore the foundations of the free enterprise system and how it works. What makes the free enterprise system the only correct way to organize the economy is that it works in a way that most people don't expect, and it's the only system that considers human nature. Additionally, the average person, when asked about the economy, thinks that it's a big pie, and everyone's fighting to get a piece. If one person's piece gets too big, it must be detracting from everyone else's piece. In other words, the economy is a zero-sum game, and there's a limited amount of pie to go around. Yet this is not the case when the economy operates under a free enterprise system. Instead, freedom to be innovative and creative with fewer regulations leads to specialization and increased trade and has the effect of a dynamic and constantly changing economy, making the pie bigger. Everyone's peace can increase at the same time. 
This program then teaches the benefits of this system by explaining why and how the pie grows to show how all the elements work together. From the standpoint of one small business owner seeking to achieve the American dream, we introduce the character Gustavus Berry, AKA Gus. We'll call him Gus Berry and his business is, you guessed it, making pies. As we go through each lesson, Gus will be used as an example as he navigates the business world, creating his pie company known as Gooseberry Pies. You will be able to better understand the free enterprise system as we discuss Gus's pie business. This course will consist of five lessons. Number one, introduction to the foundations of free enterprise. What is the primary basis for a free enterprise system? Number two, the entrepreneurial role. Business planning and development. What does it take to create and start a business? Third, running a business, marketing, pricing, and promoting products, managing a successful enterprise. Fourth, leadership and ethical decision making, running a business with integrity, and why ethical leadership is crucial for success. And finally, the intersection of business and government, how to operate a business in an environment with ever-increasing regulation. We look forward to embarking upon this journey together as we examine how and why the free enterprise system is the only way to organize an economy. So, as you see there, that gives you a little bit of an introduction to what we've tried to do with this curriculum. And as I mentioned, this is a unique curriculum where we seek to educate students about the value of the free enterprise system but also then the role of entrepreneurs play in society and what, how uh, markets lead to ethical and, and constructive business development and the way businesses interact with government. So as I indicated, we're targeting this program to high and middle school students in uh, you know, any school context. And I'll speak uh, more about that towards the end. But let me give you just a brief introduction of each part of the program. As I mentioned, the course will consist of five lessons. And the first, possibly the most important lesson, I believe, but it's the beginning of, of the program where we discuss the introduction to what is the free enterprise system. And many of you in this room will likely understand the basic economics be behind how markets work and why, as Friedrich Hayek famously wrote, we don't simply have to solve some sort of math or calculation problem to determine what is the most efficient means of resource allocation. In fact, this is not the foundation or the core problem that economics is trying to solve. That is, what is the most efficient means to allocate resources. But we begin this program with a lesson on why freedom and liberty are the foundational components to what it means to be a human being. And that's where I believe students at a young age need to be introduced to and understand why we in this room and organizations like the John Locke Foundation support liberty. This is where the justification to free markets begin. And I believe is largely lost on many individuals in our society, both young and old. Economics is a science of choice, and choices are necessary in all areas of life due to limited scarce resources, and choice cannot happen without freedom. And young people don't seem to understand that today. In fact, in Milton and Rose Friedman's famous book, aptly titled Free to Choose, they mention what I believe is the core, albeit subtle, problem that harms many economic systems today. And they note, writing shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union, that despite the drastic change in greater number of free market economies, Many governments remain committed to socially engineering all aspects of society. Consequently, we believe that educating younger, the younger generation as to why free enterprise is the only system in which is consistent with human nature or what it means to be a human being is so important because it is absent in most curricula today. The second lesson, as I mentioned in that intro video, focuses on what is the entrepreneur and how individuals are the drivers of innovation and change in the economy. And in this lesson, we focus on how the character introduced before you, Gus, started his pie business and what steps are necessary to operate a business in a free enterprise economy. And so students in that lesson, the second lesson, get an understanding of what is entrepreneurship 
an understanding of the stages of business development and in, from the innovation and creative process all the way to marketing and selling a business. And then students also gain an understanding of the nature of risk and how the market process actually works. And uh, we believe it's so important to help students understand that entrepreneurs and the business they create are not the result of random decisions. That people just wake up one day and argue, oh, I think I'll start a business. But it's an important interaction between individuals and markets in the signaling mechanism that determines what resources are desired and needed. And in a free market economy, we know that opportunities are created for entrepreneurs to discover and create new products or services that have a potential profit. And the profit potential that exists is not something that is um, usually twisted in our media and overall societal marketplace as something that's negative. But it's actually a signaling mechanism, just like traffic lights. Green means go, red means stop. And this role of entrepreneur is part of a response to those signaling mechanisms that exist in the marketplace. And so with an unregulated price system, we explain throughout this curriculum that entrepreneurs are poised to take advantage of these opportunities that they might other not otherwise be able to take advantage of. And so the forms of entrepreneurship that we discuss in this video are an essential role to the market process. And without these entrepreneurs bringing opportunities to the market, they're going to respond to the other incentives that exist. And this is where we begin to lead towards the end of the, in the fifth lesson, to the role of government and how the twisting incentives enter in through, in large measure, the regulatory process. And there's a lot of good examples of this. And I know I was speaking um, just here a few minutes ago during lunch that, you know, if we imagine a world in which there are no properly established free markets or free prices to communicate the signals, we see all sorts of distortions of what goes on in the market. And in this scenario, you know, the outcomes that are likely to occur are ones that are historically we can point back to, but are so very, pre excuse me, so very uh, prevalent. And free prices are necessary to allow us to demonstrate the proper signals to entrepreneurs. And um, I think engaging students with good examples about that is going to be crucial for communicating the value of the free enterprise system. The third lesson is where we get into a lot of the nuts and bolts of what we're trying to communicate in terms of actually running a business. What does an entrepreneur do? So students will learn how to target a market for a new good or service. And they'll learn various stages that can be, and strategies that can be used to determine prices and targeting um, specific consumers. So this lesson gets into, as I mentioned, a lot of the nuts and bolts of what an entrepreneur does. Target market, business segmentation, and we also speak about the practical aspects of running a business, such as pricing and promoting products, communicating a message, and proper uh, messaging is key. Then we get into the, the final two lessons, which depart a little bit from the actual specifics of the entrepreneur, but talk about the characteristics of what it means to be an ethical leader, and then also the relationship between business and government. So the fourth, in the fourth lesson, students learn about um, and are able to define the basis of what it means to make ethical decisions in any context. But then we apply these to the business context and that they see the basis of free enterprise is rooted in an ethical, moral framework. So we begin talking about ethics and character development, first as an individual, but then as leadership and how we relate to and interact with other people. And in this way, what we need fundamentally is to become more ethical, is understanding what it means to think. Think critically and think with some sort of ethical foundation. And so we focus this lesson on the first stages, as I said, the relationship between an individual and individual decision making. And then we, we get into a broader understanding of leadership and how leadership is rooted first in being an ethical leader and it involves how you communicate and interact with other people. And then we get into one of, I think, uh, uh, the problems with understanding the role of entrepreneurship 
today with many young people and adults, but what is the difference between leadership and management? Establishing a vision for a company is an essential role for an entrepreneur, but may not be the same role as someone who is in management. So leaders make the most of what they have, they inspire people, they create vision, but the traits of leaders and the traits of managers aren't always identical. And so again, this is another key lesson I believe targeted towards people in their high school years is so critical in that focusing on the relationship between ethics, leadership, and management is something that I never heard until I was even older than my college years. And so business leaders, um, I think when we create that framework, should maybe get a, a fundamental shift towards how businesses are viewed in society. I mean, one example that I like to give is that Often people think of Bill Gates as a great entrepreneur who created the vast empire of Microsoft. Society looks at Bill Gates, I ask my students the question, does society look at Bill Gates and what he did for Microsoft as a more successful person today running the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or as starting the corporation Microsoft? And it's often viewed that Bill Gates now is a point in his life where he can finally give back. Well, I think that's the exact wrong message that people need to hear because what Bill Gates gave to the world through the value creation of Microsoft is profoundly more than he'll ever give to the world through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And so I think young people need to be taught that in business, we don't need to ask the question, well, after I'm finished with my business career, then I can give back. But giving back is by creating a good or service that can increase value in the world and this can be viewed as a high virtue. The final lesson um, that we discussed, as I introduced in the video, is the lesson of uh, the relationship between government and free enterprise, which is where I began my talk a few minutes ago. Is this is, a, is, is shifting, and I believe dramatically, in our world today. And in this lesson, students learn that the origins of business regulation and public policy were really based on the origins of what it meant to govern a free society, is protection of that freedom, not encroachment into that freedom. So we begin this lesson by discussing the founding of America and based on these principles of liberty and freedom, which created the initial basis for government and the role of government in business. And that's the primary role that it should remain, is to protect individual freedom. But over time, the steady growth of American government has led to an increasing role for the laws and regulations to impact businesses and the entrepreneurs that run those businesses. And so we look at some specific examples in this final lesson to show that business regulation has a long and powerful legacy that has only had a steady upward trend over the past 100 years. Today, the US government contains over 70 federal regulatory departments, agencies, commissions. Over 300,000 full-time employees are involved in federal regulatory process. And this, the list of regulations passed by these agencies hovers around 165,000 pages. This is often something young people have never heard. And this data provides the context for understanding the vast role of the regulatory state. With some re while, while some regulations may be necessary in some contexts to protect individual freedom, students need to be uh, clear and need to have a clear understanding that the barriers in place that impact entrepreneurial behavior are extensive. And the goal of regulation is to make sure businesses run, quote, fairly. Yet sometimes this regulation attempt is to change the behavior and direction of how resources are allocated entirely. And we can see that in a profound way with the uh, effect on energy industry, for example. Some estimate that the cost of business regulation in American economy today is roughly 10% of GDP or almost $2 trillion annually. And these are, again, messages that young people rarely hear unless they um, have parents like probably many of you in this room. So this curriculum, what we titled Free Enterprise Now, the website I had up there on the screen a minute ago, 
can be found at freeenterprisenow.com or .org. It's available free online to any educator, whether you're a homeschooled parent, you teach in a private or public school, and it can be used in a variety of ways, and it can be tailored to any length of time, really, that the educator desires. Each of the five lessons that I've outlined here today contain four or five separate videos that are available, again, free on the website. And there are many extra links to articles or other online videos, and we provide discussion questions as well. In addition, we provide a free curriculum guide that we can send to you, which is a multiple page PDF, which gives you opportunity to go through each lesson with additional discussion questions, et cetera. And we hope this program helps middle and high school students gain a deep understanding of the importance of the free enterprise system today and why the system is responsible for the prosperity that exists in our world. And more importantly, we hope that this program educates young people to lead in the business world in a way that continues to create value and to be a voice against the tide of increasing regulatory environment and against the destruction primarily of liberty that defines what it means to be a human being in our world today. So I hope all of you can at least communicate to you know, your family, your friends, and others about the importance of these values and what we're trying to communicate today. And, and please utilize um, the curriculum I've introduced. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs>